So I want to try something new, and that's to push myself to try out every single demo, early access game, or free to play game that exists in this world. I'm talking about from the most obscure to the most anticipated. This should be fun. So first up, we're going to talk about Single Feather. Now this game is a single player platformer developed by Kevin Adams. The goal of this game is to reach the end of the stage where you'll be reunited with your little chickies. You'll have to jump and dash your way through obstacles in order to reach your nest. Think a uh, Super Meat Boy, only way less punishing. Along the way, you can collect these stars which are laid out all across each level. If you go to the level selector, you can also see how many stars are available to collect in each stage. Speaking of stages, the demo offers about 60 of them, each varying in levels of difficulty. Now, I would say overall, it took me about 30 minutes to actually complete all 60 of these levels. Now, the controls for the game are fairly simple. You have the ability to dash, jump, double jump, and that's pretty much about it. To mix things up though, the game does throw these other animals your way that can be used to bounce off of in order to reach different parts of the level. None of the animals can actually harm you though. However, they can get in your way and make certain spots kind of hard to reach. Although, to be honest, this was never really too much of a pain in the ass. The only danger to your life actually comes in the form of spikes or falling to your death. So what I like about this game is its simplicity. There's only a few controls, so the main focus is having good timing on button presses, having quick reactions to level design, and having the foresight to be able to map out a decent path to be able to reach the end of a stage. Honestly, I refer to this as more of a warm-up type of game. And what do I mean by that? So I consider a warm-up game to be the type of game where it helps you get your hands ready for a more complicated type of game. So before throwing yourself into Dark Souls, you could play something like God of War to kind of get used to combat heavy games. That's not exactly a one to one, but you get what I'm trying to say. So if you're working your way up to a harder platformer, this one is a good option for practicing with. As a bonus, the game will throw a fun stage at you every so often, kind of like this one right here. No real work is required in this stage, but it is kind of cool to watch. The only downside I can actually think of to this demo is that you don't actually have a chance to face off against any of the bosses, kind of like how they show you inside the trailer. Which is a bummer, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Overall, this demo is pretty good. Next up, we got Rolling Rascal. This one is a high speed action platformer created by Gabriel Gonzalez and Kiromatic. The goal here is to get to the end of the stage and collect as many coins as you possibly can. Think uh, 3D Sonic the Hedgehog. So yeah, you basically know where I'm going with this here. Now the demo offers a tutorial stage and a beginner stage to try. I probably could have spent about an hour inside this demo, but honestly, I had to cut it off after about 30 minutes. I'll explain that here in a little bit. The controls are actually fairly robust. You can run, dash, jump, double jump, turn into a cannonball, dive bomb through objects, and even interact with a ton of different obstacles. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this one. I do have issues with this game, but to start, I'm gonna be very positive. On the positive side, there is nothing wrong with this game in the technical side of things. The game works properly, it doesn't crash, the controls work how they should, the camera is not the best, but it is serviceable. When you have momentum in this game, it reminds me of Sonic, but in a good way. Flying through an open space at high speed, then jumping and grinding on a rail brings a smile to my face, and I'm talking about from ear to ear. Now where the game kind of loses me, is its actual level design. The game wants you to collect these coins. However, these coins are in spots that just require you to slow down to be able to actually grab them. Like here, with these damn umbrellas. You can't be at full speed and grab these at the same time. You essentially have to stop slow down and then jump up through the umbrella and try to collect all the coins. 
And honestly, this just overall kills the momentum of the game. The name of the game is speed, right? Also, you can't always grab every single coin on the first pass through of an area. So you'll find yourself having to backtrack just to go back and grab the coins that you missed because it was on a different pathway. This makes the level actually more of a chore than actually just having fun with it and being able to play fast through the playground that they provide to you. Now, if the game wasn't centered around speed, honestly, it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. But therein lies the issue. The game is centered around speed and momentum. So when you kill that, you kind of kill the pacing of the game. Now, like I said, I like the base of this game. Like it feels good. The controls feel fine. I just really hope that the devs go back and create better levels that actually promote you being able to go fast once the game actually drops. So because of that overall, I think this one actually falls into the meh category, but it's got good bones. It, it honestly really does. Last up, we got Reaper's Interim Program. Interim? Interim something like that. So this is a roguelike bullet hell type of game made by David Polito Vargas. Now in this one you play as a baby death and you have to level yourself up to big daddy death. Up front, this one's pretty good. So the gameplay here is very simple. Collect enough souls in order to level up and dodge incoming attacks as you go. As you level up higher, you'll get more tools like a rolling ability or a bubble shield to help you along the way. Also, every time you reach a new level, the game will also add more and sometimes more difficult incoming attacks. For example, by the time that I got to level 10, I was having to dodge multiple fireballs, spike floors, and incoming missile attacks. Now, level 10 is the cap when it comes to the demo, but the actual game is going to have up to 50 levels whenever the game actually releases. So now I'm going to admit, this game isn't exactly overly difficult, but it is easy to get clipped a lot whenever you're trying to go for souls if you're just being impatient. Now, I never died along the way at any point when it came to this game, but I did get hit, like I said, a couple times just from being sloppy, which is a good sign since you can't just autopilot your way to the victory. If I'm being honest, I think there's one thing that could probably help this game is maybe like a timer. That way you can't just sit around too long. You have to constantly be rushing for the souls within a short amount of time. But that's just a little extra here to throw in. This game definitely falls into the warm up category type of game for me. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I got a good chance to work out my reaction timing skills, but I never really felt like I overworked myself either. If there is any gripes that I have, is that the leveling system is just a bit too slow. So essentially you have to fill up this yellow gauge before you can actually progress up to the next level, which takes about three minutes longer than I think you probably should during each level up. Now this doesn't sound like a lot at first, but when your gameplay is simple to start, that three minutes that you feel along the way is way longer than it needs to be. But other than that, this game is pretty fun and quick and simple and that sometimes is just a nice change of pace. Honestly, I would probably let a beginner level player play this game just so that way they can work on their soft skills before they get to something a little bit more difficult and hard. And from the gameplay that you're seeing in the background, you can pretty much tell that this isn't overly difficult. It is fun, but it is not overly difficult. So honestly, I will put this one into, you know, Pretty good. Thank you so much to everyone for listening in. I'm certainly looking forward to bringing you more demos that I think are worth trying out. And if I find ones that are not, hopefully I can show you those ones as well. As always, I definitely recommend that you go out and try all these demos and these games for yourself. And I would love to hear what you guys think about those inside the comments below. Catch y'all on the next one. And of course, like and subscribe.